Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Malt House Games Podcast. My name is Delton. I'll be your host today, and with me, as usual, is my lovely wife and yellow player, Haley. And with me today is my BFFL, Willie Nelson. The Willie shirt. The Willie shirt. One of the best. Uh, what present was that? That was just a Just Because present, I think. It wasn't Christmas or birthday or Valentine's Day or some dumb holiday we made up? I don't think so. Okay. So basically, Delton had a coordinated effort in order to get me this shirt from Ella's store in Elk City. I did. Uh, I had a, or I have a coworker who is also from Elk City, and she was going back home for some reason. And I said, "Hey, there's this store that has this shirt that Haley really wants. Can you go grab it? I will transfer however much it is and uh, have her pick it up." And sure enough, she stopped by and texted me and said, "Hey, I'm here. It's this much. They have these sizes." I was like, "Okay, please grab this one. I'll transfer now." And I transferred, and boom, I, she brought it to work, and I was able to give it to Haley. And Delty, why am I showing off my Willie Nelson shirt today? Because this is our first attempt uh, at recording the podcast on video. And our goal with this, some of these might not be usable at all. We're going to find out. But our goal with this is if you are backing us on Patreon, you gain access to the mostly unedited video version of the podcast if you would like to watch it. I will still do my edited version out audio only everywhere else but for podcast uh for podcast for patreon patrons only we will be showing video which is really just going to be me and Haley sitting here talking looking at each other and the camera and each other and the camera and doing that back and forth you basically get to see me looking like wilson from home improvement that 90s tv show starring tim allen or you can seize your eyes over the thing yes and like i'm going to move out of the camera and you're going to edit like a fish going in front of my face or i'm going to move this way you're going to edit like a book or a newspaper being held over my face. You'll never see the bottom half of my face. Exactly. But if you would like to see this video version of the podcast, you can head to patreon.com slash malthousegames and join all our other lovely patrons like Allison, Alan, Jennifer, and Cliff, as well as a bunch of other patrons at different levels. Uh, feel free to go check that out and join them in being awesome and supporting us on the show. Gallons of patrons. I don't know about gallons. Uh, Scores. Here's the thing. This week in Oklahoma, it has become cold, <laughs> very cold. Uh, the high today was supposed to be in the 50s, but it is not that right now. It got, I think it got to be in the 30s, but it also snowed a couple weeks ago and we were gone. Yeah, we missed it, which is stupid. I never get snow ever. That's all. I'm sad about it. <laughs> and so this week, being that it's cold, Delty picked us up some really stout beers. Yes, I have decided because that's just who we are. And generally we do this anyway. It's cold season. Cold season means heavy beer season. Stouts, porters, uh, imperial stouts, sometimes imperial or double IPAs or black IPAs, uh, Belgian quads, things of that sort. Lots we want, of bourbon barrel age stuff. We want heavy beers for the winter. We want it to warm your soul, which is why today- if I had one. Yes. Today, uh, this first beer is from Tupps Brewery. Brewery. Jesus, it's starting already. Down in Texas, this is Full Grown Woodsman, an imperial stout brewed with maple syrup and aged on oak. It's a 12-fluid-ounce can with 12.1% alcohol by volume. It says wood, barley, maple syrup, and the great outdoors. Chop some wood, build a fire, and saddle up to the beast of a stout in this can. Woodsman is smooth but loaded with rich flavor. An SRM, whatever that means, is of 50, and an IBU, International Bittering Unit, of 50. I wish I had a brewery so I could just put random letters on a can and just assign numbers to it. So have it be an HTB of 47, but a DDM of only 13. DDM sounds, I think DDR, Dance Dance Revolution, and then DDM sounds like you take Dance Dance Revolution and EDM, Electronic Dance Music, and just make Dance Dance Music, but it's super techno. Everyone knows the DDR is the Deutsche Democratic Republic. No, nobody knows that anymore. Did it air? We've moved on. <laughs> so this is the beer. It is super dark, as you can see if you're watching the video version. This is like black as night. You can't see any light coming through this thing. Super, Woo. super dark. Has a little bit of head to it. Haley, how's it smell? We have drank the other three of these in the four pack already, so we have tried this before. It is very mapley in smell. It smells very sweet. It also smells almost like a burnt sugar, too. It kind of does have that little bit of burnt sugarness to it, and I feel like you do get the maple, but it's not an overpowering sweetness of the maple. It's like not actual maple syrup, but like the Pearl Milling Company maple syrup is what it smells like. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Haley, go ahead and give it a try since I'm 
editing this differently between audio and video, mm. I need to make sure to not just have us both sitting here taking a drink for 30 seconds of silence. <laughs> it is delightful. You explain while I drink now. So it tastes like you are eating a vanilla bean that is dipped in maple syrup and toasted a little bit with love from your grandmother. I mean, really, you can't put it much better than that. Yeah. It's very heavy. It has a very heavy mouthfeel. Uh, it's not overly carbonated, but it's not flat either. It's kind of got a nice middle ground, but it's definitely, uh, it doesn't have the velvety texture you get sometimes with certain stouts, but it doesn't have the little bit, uh, I don't want to say thinner. It's like a, uh, like it, eating a dark chocolate versus a milk chocolate. Kind like of. A milk chocolate's but, very velvety, but dark yeah. chocolate's a little more heavy. Yes, but it's not, it's not porter style. Like a porter's always a little bit more straightforward. It's the less, the uh, least amount of velvet you're going to get in a heavy beer. But this is like a nice middle ground. It is stout. It is delicious. It is nutritious, I'm sure. I don't know about that, but it's freaking good. So Yes. <laughs> we really like that. Tupps Brewery, again, has great stuff. And so, Delty, why have we already had the first three? We've already had the first three because we went to BGG Con, which we will talk about here shortly. And we came back from BGG Con, uh, finding out that one of our roommates had got COVID, which is very unfortunate. Thank goodness he's okay. And we got home and we tested. And everything was fine. Tested. We were still good. After three days, we went and got a full PCR test. And that was also clear. And then we tested. And testing seems fine. And everything's been good. But Haley developed a cough and started getting... uh, She had a lot of drainage that turned into a bad cough. Turned into bronchitis. She went to the doctor. Which, if you look at my medical chart, every year, the third week of November, I have bronchitis. So, yes, and thank at, you, virtual medical chart. At the doctor, it was negative for the flu, negative for COVID. Negative for strep. Negative for strep. She's got the bronchitis again. So, Haley's got the bronchitis. We're going into this weekend. Everything's good. We start the week off, you know, working, all the usual stuff. But staying home because I have not left this house nor seen another person. Yes. And then... Wednesday comes around. We load the car. We load the car with everything. It's now the 10th day past our known exposure to a person who did have COVID. And that means we should be at that moment of we either do or we don't. So we load the car. We get everything ready. We're all dressed up. I hand washed my new vintage uh, coat to wear to show my mom because it's freaking awesome that Haley bought me. And it looks adorable in it. Very late 70s ranch wear style, but it's great. Uh, so we get everything ready, and then I'm like, shoot, we got to take COVID tests before going to mom's house, because I w- told her we would do it, and I wanted to be safe, because my mom had a very hard time with COVID when she had it. So to be safe, we bust out the home COVID tests, we do a little swizzle-swazzle. After we had already loaded the car. Yes, after we spent all the time loading the car, packing the bags. I, get, I again repeat, 30 minutes loading the car. Uh, we take the test. Mine, absolutely fine. Perfect, clear, negative, we're good. Haley's, a very, very, very faint line which means positive. So we bust out a second test, positive. We bust out a third test, positive. Then I drive her to the urgent care and three hours? Three hours of waiting. I, I read a lot. It was you nice. read a lot. Three hours to get her in and tested and out, and it's positive for COVID, to which the doctor replied, What the shit? Yes, because it was the same doctor she saw the week before when she got Negative for everything and diagnosed with bronchitis and got steroids and antibiotics. So I had four negative COVID tests. Hadn't seen anybody in almost two weeks. Uh, did not leave my house. I'm officially calling it the uh, immaculate infection. Yes, it just came out of nowhere. But the good news is... Call the Vatican. I'm, I'm going to back that up just a teensy bit. Uh, the good news is you're only like symptom of it is just the brain fog a little brain fog and tight chest so i'm living laughing loving but you've had a tight chest with the bronchitis the whole time yes but it makes sense now if there was overlap in there somehow so long story short we did not go to thanksgiving i have five pounds of tiramisu we're eating by ourselves. we have also split two beers each night as we've watched movies and played board games and just hung out enjoying each other's company because delton stuck with me forever yes and that is why we have drank the other three of these amazing beers already uh, because we're stuck at home right now. Yeah. Yay. But thankfully we have our health and we're going to be testing Thank over the goodness. next few days and hopefully be able to reintegrate back into society here in about five to 10 business days. Hopefully everything will be back to normal. Hopefully so. So since we've been sheltering in place, we've played some games. We've I've done some watercolor. You've watched some wrestling and it's been a really good time and it's worth it to be able to relax the last couple of weeks because the yeah. week before was a lot. Oh, here's the door. 
It's straight ahead. It's it's a game. So the episode episode. God damn, I'm already messing things up. This is episode 132. Don't think we said that. Anyway, so the game for today is a game we played at BGG Con, which again we'll get to later. The game for today is Flamecraft. Uh, I just realized I don't. Uh, I think it's published by Lucky Duck Games. Oh no, I didn't even look at that. It says cardboard car- alchemy. This is cardboard alchemy, but I believe that Lucky Duck is the company selling it through the U.S. So we don't actually have a physical copy of this. We actually yes. got it from the hot game shelf at the BGG Con library. Yes, we rented it from the new game shelves at the BGG library. One night, uh, they had I think six or seven copies of this game in the library, and we've only saw we only saw one available at any time. And that one was this copy, and it was at 12.30 at night. I was going to pull up real quick, because this is a fascinating little uh, metric, because people are are cool that keep this kind of stuff around. So on the Mazala Discord, they actually, Michelle had a breakdown. BGG released the numbers of, like, the most rented games, uh-huh. uh, which is pretty interesting, and I like that they did that. And we were talking about uh, potential skewing of the values based on the number of copies available. And how that can really skew this a lot. However, uh, I'm trying to find it. Holy. Okay. Uh, So the library checkouts. The number one game checked out across the entire con was Flamecraft. Was it really? They had six copies. When you get a copy of a hot new game, you're supposed to return it within four hours. Delton. That is not always the case. I didn't ever keep a hot game that long. (laughs) I kept a regular longer. That's true. You Uh, you and uh, uh, Tyler basically got a bounty on your head saying, hey, bring back our games. You get an email saying, it's been more than... 12 hours. Please return this. Sorry. The number one game rented was Flamecraft at 139 checkouts. Really? Doesn't feel like that's a lot, but at the same time, when you consider it's a library of like 5,000 games. Right. So that was 139 games. Second place at 78 was Endless Winter Paleo Paleo Americans. Don't know anything about that game. Splendor Duel had 65. Scout had 54. Uh, and then it was just a bunch of other games, Cascadia, Tribes of the Wind, Turing Machines, brand new, Heat, new racing game, uh, some stuff like that, Ark Nova Kites. But Flamecraft, 139, the next closest was 78, and then 65, and then 58, and then it's like 50s, 40s, 30s. I'm sure Kitten in the Blender was number 10. I'm sure Kitten in the Blender didn't get checked out at all, is my guess, <laughs> but who knows. But yeah, so Flamecraft... Uh, I believe it is being published in the U.S. by Lucky Duck and, and Cardboard Alchemy. Uh, it is designed by Manny Vega. Illustration and art direction is Sandara Tong. Graphic design is also Manny Vega. Development is Brad Brooks and Peter Vaughn. 3D models are Eric Tosco and Christian Strain. And the 3D models we didn't get to see. We did not. But they have 3D pieces with the like more advanced version. And the rule book is done by Jeff Frazier. So this game... See if I can uh, zoom out a little bit here. I'm zoomed way in on this uh, rule book. So this game is, first of all, let's talk about the art. Absolutely adorable. It's really, really cute. It's a, basically a bunch of watercolor little dragons and dinosaurs. Yeah. and They're all dragons. They're all dragons. But their little town is adorable. So basically you are playing a bunch of little dragons that are trying to go to different shops to get different ingredients. And... I forgot what you do with those ingredients. That's why Delton explains the game. (laughs) It happens. Uh, Yeah, so the basis of the game is that there is a mat out in front of you. It's uh, rolled up, at least in the version we played, and I think that's the base version. It's a neoprene-style mat, a very, very thin one, but very well-designed and cute. Uh, There are different shops on that mat, as well as where you put your decks and things like that. Uh, Along with the shops, there are some cards called enchantments. So the way the game is going to play is you have a hand of cards that are going to be dragons. You can play a dragon into one of these shops. Uh, When you do that, you can either gather goods from the shop, which allow you to like, oh, I'm going to take some bread. Oh, I'm going to take some diamonds. Oh, I'm going to take some meat, whatever. And then you get to place a dragon when you do it. You can activate dragons that are already there, different things like that. And then uh, if you don't want to do that, you can actually enchant a shop if you have purchased an enchantment. Uh, or I guess that's your turn is purchasing purchasing the enchantment and enchanting a shop, which essentially makes the shop stronger when you gather goods from it later. But the enchantments are how you're going to earn points in the game. They cost the most resources. For example, in the rulebook here, the enchantment it's showing, you when you buy that, you would have to pay two diamond resources and three bread resources. The bread come from the bakery. The diamonds come from the, I guess, jewel crafter or whatever it is. 
but that's mo- pretty much how the game's going to go. You're going to visit these shops to gain goods and put more dragons there to make them stronger. You're going to buy enchantments to enchant the shops to make them even stronger, but also gain points in the process. And there's a bunch of resources, tokens being thrown around. I think you can have like 12 of each resource token at max, and there's like six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different resource tokens, and there's coins, which is a lot. It's basically building up your own little small town uh, mm-hmm. main street. It's really cute. I love, I love that the feel is that everybody's part of the community and everybody wants all the businesses to succeed, even though you're all playing against each other. That's true. That's kind of what it seems like, though, because you don't have like one business that you want this one business to you know, expand or to be enchanted. Like, no, everybody's working together to enchant different businesses. Now you're going to get personal points for what you enchant. But I like the feel of it. It just feels like a, I know I grew up in a small town. My mom had a, a store on Main Street and I worked at her uh, Western Furniture store. And I also worked at the coffee shop down the street. And I also uh, got paid in socks to cover the shoe store's lunch breaks. And so I worked at a lot of the shops downtown. And that's how it kind of felt. You know, even if you had two shoe stores, like everybody was kind of rooting for everybody to survive, helping each other out. Everybody's part of the same coalition to, you know, boost the uh, local economy. And so I like that this game really felt that way. Everybody's trying to help out the other stores, even if we are trying to win the game ourselves. Yeah, you're you're waiting for somebody to boost a store so you could come in and, and boost the store. So that way, when you go there, it benefits you. But in the end, yeah, you're boosting the store. You're setting the store up to be this awesome place that everyone wants to visit. And it, it does, it has that community feeling, but also there's the little competition within that where you can beat somebody to a spot, but they're still going to be able to benefit from you beating them there. So it's kind of interesting in that way. The game is exactly as simple as it sounds. The only thing I didn't say anything about, uh, there are artisan dragons, which are in the game scoring. They can either happen immediately upon completion of some uh, uh, requirement or... At the end of the game, you can like check a thing, you know, oh, how many coins do you have? If you have this many coins, blah, uh, that sort of thing. It's super adorable. It's super simple. Uh, I was confused by this one. And I think this is where it's not a negative. This isn't a negative review, y'all. But what it is, is it's a, this is a solid game that's simple. It's adorable. It's got easy to learn mechanics. It's a fun little game. It, it's something that honestly, I think that we will probably buy for the collection because if someone comes over, they're new to board games. It's like, okay, adorable dragon game. Yeah, there's a few things going on, but all in all, it's pretty simple and you'd be able to catch it no problem. And there's no gotcha elements to it. There's no take no. that elements. It's very, it's like a very sweet, pleasant experience. It's a super simple, pleasant game. It's very chill, right? Yes, it's a very, very chill. chill game. I don't get the hype for this game. BGG's library had six copies and we saw one the entire time we were there that was available to rent. There was one booth that had the deluxe version with the like special minis that are actual 3D dragon models and stuff. They were charging $70 a piece and they sold out the first day. And now I didn't realize this because I was looking at prices. The the big version like that, I think is a 60 or 70 because all the bonus stuff and like metal coins, maybe the regular version is like a $40 game. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. I would buy this at between 30 and 40 is what I would expect. That seems fair. Absolutely. But I was like 70 for the base game. What is going on? But that was just hype driving hype. And I think that was the big thing that got me is that this game was, it was super cute and people had heard good things. So they wanted to play it. So they rented it. So people couldn't get a hold of it. So they rented it. And it just, the hype train kept moving up and going faster and faster. And by the time we sat down and learned it and played it, we were like, this is really cute. And I like it. I do not understand why everyone is clamoring so hard for it. And it was just like, it's the only time I felt that with a game that I've just hit a point where I was like, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, it is a really good game and we do plan on picking it up for the collection because it will be good to introduce folks to. It's a good, you Or know, if you just want to chill with cute dragons. Or if you just want to chill with cute dragons. Super it's solid. adorable. I absolutely love the little, the little bakery. That was my mm-hmm. absolute favorite. But I was kind of feeling the same way. Like it was, oh yeah, it was, it was a good game and I enjoyed it, but- why is this rate so high? Because Delton was pulling up the BGG list earlier, and what is this rated as? Like seven hundred eighty-two. It's, it's, it's less. It's it's in the seven hundreds. Yeah. Which for a game to break one thousand is generally saying something. Like, uh, breaking a thousand is very difficult to do. And yeah, there's some games in there that we probably disagree with, and everybody will in that one th- top thousand games. It's a lot of games, but this one has shot up already into the seven hundreds, and it barely hit the market. Like I could have bought it Black Friday. There were deals on it already, going for like twenty seven, twenty eight dollars. And I was tempted, but I would rather spend that money, which I did, on other games that were on sale that I was like, Haley Christmas or myself fun stuff 
My like, birthday. It just yeah, or your birthday, which is coming Tuesday. up on Tuesday. Yay. So this is kind of Haley's birthday episode. So happy birthday, yeah. sorry, to uh, Haley. She will be a uh, a gigantic thirty one. Thirty one. Tons of fun. Nearly done. Nearly done. <laughs> give sorry. me rum. Give get uh, go on a run. Go on a run. Yay. In the sun. Anyway, Flamecraft. It, it's a solid. It's, begun. it's a solid game. It's a simple game. It's a cute game. I just don't think that the hype behind it, I guess I don't, it's not that I don't think it's valid, it's that I don't know why it's there. Does that make sense? Because yeah. if somebody's like, this game is so adorable, you have to play it, it's cute and simple. If that's the hype, I'm here for it. Absolutely. But I guess I just didn't hear what the hype was because everyone was just, we have to play it, you have to play it, somebody has to play it, we have to find it. And that was the whole conversation all weekend with everybody. And I think that's might be what it is because it is adorable. It's one of the most adorable games that I've seen come out this year. I really enjoy the artwork. Like a little bread dragon. It's a little bread dragon. That one's my favorite. I love I a little bread maker. But I think you and I were going into it looking for, oh, mechanics. It's going to be great. We, we were. Gameplay. Rather than, oh, it's just adorable. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I have games that I've bought just for the theme. We've talked about this before. Theme really drags me in. And this theme really drug me in. It's drag on me in. Oh, hey. There you go. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm like Delton. Like, it. I think we were not expecting it to be what it is. I don't know what we were expecting necessarily. I don't know. But it was good. It was a really good game, really cute game. I think we were expecting mechanics, but we were, and the mechanics are good, but I think the hype is really revolved around how freaking adorable it is. Because it's just, I think what it comes down to is the mechanics were simpler than we expected for the amount of hype. Because yes. at BGG Con, as you know, in the board game world, when something is super, super, super hyped, it's generally either the theme or the mechanics. And I think we expected mechanics and we came out with theme. Yes. So it's it's a weird spot, right? It's not that it's not that we don't like the game. It's just that I think the hype is not necessarily valid for it. Unless you are super hyped for an adorable game, because yeah. I would say <laughs> this and Verdant are like some of the two top most adorable games this year that we've played. Oh, this year. I was like, what about this Calico year. and no, all your year. other games? 2022, baby. 2022. There you go. Uh, yeah, so that's that's Flamecraft. You can pick it up basically everywhere right now. I think you can still find it online for sale. It's really cute. They do have like a, I think this was a Kickstarter too. Oh, yeah. I think it was a Kickstarter. But you can find the big special version with the 3D minis and like all that kind of stuff uh, still for sale. I say the base game's fine unless you're just, you know, a... Uh, uh, what's the term? I don't know. If you're just clamoring for, you know, deluxe pieces, deluxe uh, components to the game, I think the basic version's fine. Yes. But really adorable, really cute, really fun, really simple. If that's what you are into, by God, get this game. You will enjoy it. And the good news is that's not the only game we enjoyed from BGG Con. Hey, what can I get you? I'd like a topic. Any special way? Make it a top shelf topic. Coming up. Enjoy. So the topic for today is going to be BGG Con, but we need to get on to the next beer. Chug, chug, chug. <laughs> That's really heavy to take a big drink of. She has been out, like, I say out drinking me. That sounds very bad. <laughs> she yeah. Ha Haley has been drinking things, and she'll be like, are you ready for the next beer? And I've still got a half glass, and I'm like, no, I'm taking my time. This beer's heavy. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I've needed it, I guess. Not really. You've needed it for the bronchitis? Mm-hmm. Alcohol is an antiseptic. Wait. A alcohol is an antiseptic. There you go. <laughs> Science. See, that's a, there's a moment there for you audio-only listeners. You'll get, you'll, you'll miss out on me telling Haley, hey, there's a microphone you need to talk into. <laughs> but all you video listeners or you watchers, know. you're going to get it. You're going to get it. I hope this isn't boring as a video. It probably is. Just us sitting here going, hey, man. Well, if you, if you watch, like, your mom's house with what's his face and what's her face. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Tom Segura and Christina. I can never remember her last name. It was basically, ha ba 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 Ha-ba, ha <laughs> That's pretty much it. ha ba ba watch this YouTube video. ha <laughs> 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 TikTok. TikTok. Bah! So, we're at least on that level. Here's the difference. I We don't do this for four hours and expect people to watch it. Also, we don't get paid as much to do this either. Uh, that's a, we, have, we have zero sponsors. We're doing this from the joy in our heart. Uh, yes. And also for the 14.2% beer we're about to consume. <laughs> spoiler alert geez. spoiler alert okay so 
Uh, you might have a little more than me. That's okay. I will finish it if you don't want we'll to. We'll survive. Later. All right. So the second beer for this episode is Chocolate Noir from Prairie Artisan Ales. This is my favorite brewery, Tups, but this is my favorite Oklahoma brewery, Prairie. Prairie Artisan Ales Chocolate Noir is a barrel-aged imperial stout with cocoa nibs and vanilla. So both of these are barrel-aged, and both of these have vanilla. So I guess we'll see which is the winner there. That one has maple syrup, and this one has, I guess they're cacao nibs, technically, Ooh, right? Cacao. Cacao. It's like Portlandia, cacao. I, I know. This is a 12-ounce bottle, and it's 14.3% alcohol by volume. Our second highest percentage alcohol beer we have consumed on this podcast, or I guess in general, because our top one was the 120-minute IPA by Dogfish Head, which yep. was 15 to 20%. They don't really know. It's, it depends on the beer. Yeah. And also, like, we drank that on our engagement trip, and I fell asleep after half a beer. Holy Batman, smell that. Oh, my God. I. <laughs> oh, shit. It's really strong. <laughs> Holy jeez. I feel like I have my nose pressed against a rum barrel. It's kind of, this one is just, it's just as black, if not blacker, than the last beer. I don't oh know how God. that's possible. Um, this one looks like blackness in space. Like, this is space black. The other one was crayon black. This is space. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't know how to describe the smell. There is chocolate in there, like cocoa. It's like but, you unwrapped a Hershey bar and you threw it in the bottom of a rum barrel and you like smell. Kind of, yeah. It's just so strong alcohol wise. I don't think you're gonna like this one. Oh God. Ooh. All right, you take the first. Why does taste. it smell like raisins too? You, you take the first taste here, so I can react to you because I have a feeling it's gonna have the ethanol burn that you hate. That's a goddamn raisin. That's a raisin. Is it got that raisininess? Oh my God! But it has an aftertaste of vanilla that comes like 0. 0.7 seconds later. Okay, I'm gonna taste Whoa. it. Whoa. Whoa. It's a raisin. It's a vanilla e raisin. You're eating raisin bran. That's weird. It's raisin, and then, mm -hmm. like, there's nothing, and then all of a sudden it's like vanilla. And then it's vanilla, and then you also you get a little bit of that cocoa or cacao nibs. Cacao. I, that's a strain. I, hmm. It well, is not bad in any way. It's just it's peculiar in flavor. I'm glad we saved this one for last because we can sip on this one well past the podcast episode. Can you imagine trying to chug this one no. before beer number two? No. We both eat projectile vomiting on camera. Yeah. That would be bad in here. We Give the people what they want. enough beer on the rug. That, I mean, it's a good beer, but it is like, I think the raisininess comes through because the malt sweetness is there. So there's that like heavy malty sweetness. Yeah, barrel aged. So I think it's the heavy malty sweetness, which if it's barrel aged, it's probably in a whiskey barrel. And so you're getting some of the sweetness from the bourbon or whatever kind of, you know, whiskey barrel they used. Unless they use a raw barrel. I don't know. That could be a thing. Probably not. I'm going to be slow slipping on this until about 1230 tonight. And it is 724. It's going to take me a while to get through this. The more sips I get into it, it's starting to like calm down. Like my, you know how the, what's the thing with alcohol where you coat your palate and then the next sip is gentler? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. When we did our whiskey tasting, I feel like that's how this is doing. As my yeah. palate's now getting coated, I'm starting to taste more of the nuance within it. And it's not so straight up raisin. It's like now I'm getting a little more of the cocoa. I'm getting a little more of the actual like malted. It's a chocolate covered raisin now. Taste it. It's a chocolate covered raisin. Your pupils it, just got huge. It's a, it's a chocolate. <laughs> it's because I looked at the one dark spot of the room. It is a chocolate covered raisin with a hint of vanilla at the back. Delightful. Peculiar beer, but very good. Clink, clink. Pra Prairie Artisan Ales. Ah. Prairie Artisan Zumbo. Ales always does very good, interesting, high alcohol volume stuff, and also the best sours in the game. Delightful. Okay. Now what are we, we got talking about again? I forgot. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, uh, we went to BGG Con 2022 this fall. Uh, a couple weeks ago now. Yes, we did. And we wanted to talk about that because BGG is, I think, our favorite convention still. And every time we go, I think it just reinforces. I always think, like, maybe this one's my favorite. Maybe this is my favorite. And then I go to BGG Con, and it just, again, just goes, sugar -dunk, this is your favorite. And it's like an immediate <laughs> just reinforcement of it. And there's no way anything could beat it, I think. Just well, because it's chill, and we get to see so many friends and hang out, and it's also a drive away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a more intimate con than any oh, others for sure. I think I think so. Yeah, because like in other cons, like you think about Gen Con. Gen Con's fun, but it's all about shopping. It's all about networking. It's all about being on your feet. It's a huge convention center where you go to BGG Con, and it's all in one hotel. 
It's all in just about four or five rooms. And we always room with some of our very best friends in the world that we only get to see twice a year. But every time we meet them, it's like, oh, I just saw you yesterday is what it feels like. It really does. So we room with Alan and Tyler. Um, but every time we leave BGGCon, too, you leave with like a sense of like refreshment, too. Every time. Every time I leave BGGCon, more than any other convention I go to or have been to, every time I leave BGGCon, I come back thinking, I want to play board games. I want to make content. That's where we came up with the idea for the video podcast because... I've talked about on the show, uh, videos are exhausting. The people who have a full-time job and a relationship and a social life and make video content for YouTube. And sleep. I don't know how they do it. I really, I would, my personal way that I function and my mental state, I would just down, I would immediately nosedive. If I was doing that, it would be too much. Right. Because you have to prioritize your mental health in that. Yeah. I mean, the last time we did a 10 minute video was it 10 hours of work not including learning the game playing the game like and writing the script it was just outside of that it was 10 hours worth of of work i had to put in for a 10 minute video that got barely any views which yeah if you do it a lot it builds but i was like how can we provide more content for our patreon patrons i can take pieces of this podcast to do as advertisements for the podcast so people can listen and see us and then in that same thing they'll be able to know hey if you go to their patreon you can get the full video like, what can I do to do more things for content that's not going to kill my mentality toward it and not going to kill my drive toward making content? And BGGCon always sends me in revitalized, and we came up with this idea of doing, you know, a simple video recording of our podcast. And I just, I want to play games. We have games on the table right now. One I've already learned that I kind of want to play after this, after we eat dinner. We just, it's just, I come back refreshed and ready. And I think BGGCon's the only con I go to that does that. And we've played more games in the last two weeks than we have in probably the last three months combined. I mean, really, we've played a lot of games together, just me and you. And it's been really nice, though. But I also have wanted to. I'm not in the same spot. You know what I mean? I don't know. BGG Con does really good things for me. It does. It's a really fun con. And it's really a game focused con. I know we've talked about this in previous episodes. But it's really it's it's it really prioritizes the gameplay and, and the people. I really like it because we get to see Alan, we get to see Tyler, we get to see John and Lainey as well, which we need yep. to have on the podcast. We need to invite them on. What, what we need to do is sometime go see them in Colorado Springs and just take this shit to record because I have the H6. I have microphones and cables. Absolutely. But we get to see them and we get to give them hugs. Yes. But then we just play. And like the first day we got there, uh, we went and picked up Tyler from the airport. Yep. And we got some sweet Thai food, which was delightful. And then we went down to the library and immediately picked out some five-minute games and some three-hour games. Yeah, so uh, this is where we talk about the games for the, for the podcast or for the, the con. The first game we played was Turtle Splash. And it is a dexterity <laughs> game that I suck at. I just love that that was the first game we played of the Hulk. Just the big convention board games. So we're going to play a lot of board games. Turtle Splash. Turtle Splash. Turtle Splash. And it's so great. So Turtle Splash is a dexterity and memory game. That's uh, this is the game you need if you've got small children. No joke. Like we should buy it for Lakin. Lakin. Oh yeah. Because it's basically there's a little ramp and you put the turtle and you flick it and if the turtle lands on the pond, on the ramp or in the middle of the pond, you get to flip over tiles and you're trying to do the a game of memory where you learn which tiles are what and when you get to flip tiles, you're trying to flip certain ones. Uh basically you have three tracks. Like the f- top track of yours could be alligator, panda, you know, bird and tiger. And so you want to flip the alligator to move your token and flip the panda to move it and then flip the bird to move it and then the tiger. And you can do that in whatever order over however many turns. But when you memorize where they are in the little memory thing, then you know, oh, I get to flip two. Let's flip this one and this one. That'll move this token one and this token one or whatever. I feel like before we really dive into the game and before people really understand the impact of this game, we need to explain the ingenuity of the Tyler whenever he made his board game table. Oh, we, we literally took <laughs> one of the drawers that's so uh, in these, in the hotel room there at the Hyatt Regency, uh, essentially you have one big like desk under the TV that's attached to the wall and you've got two, one set of drawers in the middle, maybe two sets of drawers. We literally took one of the drawers like out of the rails, flip, and he flipped it upside down on top of the luggage, little luggage rack thing, and then took one of the free board games you get when you check in. Anytime you go to BGG, if you haven't been, and you get your badge, you get a free board game. They have like usually three or four. It's generally overstock, nothing usually super fancy, but there's always a couple people are like, oh, that's really good. Uh, 
I think Margie farted because it's she did. Stinks. I was trying Ooh. to decide whether or not I show my poker face. <sighs> oh I, Jesus! We just walked her and she pooped too. Oh God! She's she asleep. Looked, she doesn't even know what happened. She looks so adorable. She's down here sleeping on a pink fuzzy blankie. What looks on adorable, it. and yeah, it just smells like death. It <laughs> smells really badly. Jeez. Okay, uh, edit that out of the video. I'm gonna poke my nose in my beer. That sounds great. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, when you go, you get a free game. He took his game board out of that game and flipped it upside down and put it on top of the drawer that was upside down on the thing and made a table for us to play between the beds so we could sit on the beds and play games. Ingenuity. That's the ingenuity of Tyler. Uh, But anyway, we played Turtle Splash. Super, super cute game. After that, we played a game called Virtue that was all about Italy. And we all thought it was fine. Uh, I can't really remember too much of it. You were falling asleep toward the end. I was falling asleep. Literally, they would play their uh, rounds and wake me up on my turn. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember too much about the game. I think we all thought it was okay and that the turn structure was really wonky. And aside from the turn structure being wonky, like it had some neat ideas to it, but it was just a little weird. It just it just took too long between the turns. Like I know I was sleepy and I fell asleep between the rounds, but I was literally able to fall asleep between the rounds multiple times. That's And so there's no like player engagement between the rounds. I feel like that really drug it out too. That's true. Uh, Then the next day, uh, me, you and Tyler played quirky circuits, which we actually, I put it as a win. Did we actually win that? I think we did in like the last turn. Yeah. Last turn. So quirky circuits, it's a programming game where uh, if you've ever played the mind where it's like, all right, play these cards from low, you know, in ascending order and try not to miss, you know, mess it up. This is basically you're going to move these figures on the board, but you have to play cards when you think it's the right card to play, but you don't communicate that to anybody. So it's all about blindly putting things down and hoping that you're coordinating it together. And it's pretty interesting. And I actually really liked the way that it worked out, but we also play a harder difficulty one, one of the sushi levels. Then oh, my phone keeps resetting this page. Uh, and then after that, we played run animals run, which is the one about Uh, basically nature falling apart, the animals trying to eat all the, like get all the food and then concrete being poured over the tiles and ruining your chance of having resources. Oh, that was Zoo of Depression. Yeah, it's Run Animals Run Zoo of Depression. Oh, I didn't like that one, but I liked it, but I didn't like it. It's cute and it's an interesting way to style of play. Basically, you're fulfilling, you, you need to get goods. The turtle has several turtles, but they all are very slow at moving and doing stuff. The cat was really fast and nimble and can steal shit. And then Tyler played the bears, which there's two of, and they can scare other animals away. So it's like everybody has their own little thing they can do. Uh, And then we all played Boone Lake, which Tyler won, uh, even though I was trying to rush the ending in hopes to win. But that was close. Aside from him, he had 247, but me and you had 199 and 193. Yeah. Look at us go. Look at us go. Uh, We got to play that night with Alan, Rear Window, which is based off the Hitchcock movie from the... 50s? I think the 40s. 60s? No, it's not 40s. Not 40s? No, it's not 40s. I think it's 50s. Uh, okay. You have to look it up. Look it up okay. real quick while I'm talking. Uh, it's basically Mysterium meets Clue. Rear, rear Window. Kind of. Uh, it's really difficult. It's very, like, we got to the uh, end and I think we had one thing. 1954. That's 54. Okay. I didn't think it was the 40s. I knew, I knew it was either 50s or 60s, but I couldn't. I can see defeat. I couldn't place it. Mysterium was extremely difficult, or Mysterium, uh, Rear Window. Extremely difficult, but I would like it. Yes, I would like to play that one again. I liked it. We played the Exorcist game, and by played, I mean we attempted a turn <laughs> and then gave up. That was bad. Lost miserably. Uh, we played Soda Smugglers, which if you've ever played mm, Sheriff of Nottingham, yes, it's Sheriff of Nottingham, but good. Sheriff of Nottingham's not bad, but the problem with Sheriff of Nottingham is if you always tell the truth, it feels like you win. Yes. Because that's what we kept determining. And in Soda Smugglers, it's impossible to always tell the truth because the cards are dealt out randomly, so you could be lying. Even if you're telling the truth, you could try. So it forces you to not. It's re- it's really good. It's uh, You should look it up. Very good game. I, that's one I'd like to pick up. Short and sweet. Now, you were asleep when we played Pumafiosi, which is Puma and Mafiosi, like multiple Mafiosa. So Pumafiosi, terrible name. Uh, it's a game about being second. As weird as that is, everybody plays a card. It's like one person plays a card and it's like a 35. Somebody else plays a card and it's a 42. And if you can play like a 37, you're second. You're the winner of that hand and you get to put your mafia person out on this board that ranges from like one to 10 or something. And if somebody else comes in and puts a card there later winning a hand, they have to put it 
a, like if you have a, if you have uh, a 37 and they have a 28, it has to go under your 37 somewhere. But if they get a card, if you have a 37 and they get a 39, they can actually want put it right where yours is, bumping you down, giving you a negative point. See, I kind of understand. And I respect the having to be second place whenever you're being uh, part of a mafia, because it's like whenever you're speeding down the highway in a convoy, you don't want to be the fastest. You want to be the second fastest because the boys in blue are going to come after the fastest, and you can uh, outdo the hypo if you're the second fastest or beyond. So I can see that. Yes, I appreciate it's, it. It's uh, actually very fun. It was such an interesting game to think about how to play. Like it was just an entertaining game. We got to play Flotsam Fight from Oink. Do you remember this game at all? No. I don't remember a thing about it. I just know that I lost with a negative one. Haley won with two, tying with Alan with two. You won the tiebreaker, and Tyler had one point. I had negative one point. I have vague memory of this. (laughs) I don't remember that game. Was that the one where you're all playing a number and you have to be the lowest number? I don't remember. I don't either. I have no idea. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is not due to alcohol consumption. No, this wasn't. is due to being really a sleepy girl. Yeah, oh, I mean, of course. I, I wish I knew exactly when we played that. I wish I had timestamps. I have like a vague memory of it. Yeah. But I could not tell you a single thing about it otherwise, other than it's like an oint game, I think. It is an oint game. Yeah, uh, I win. Land versus Sea, me and you played, which we love. We talked about that before. Ghosts of Christmas. Uh, Tyler spotted Ghosts of Christmas at the Bazaar. We haven't talked about that before. We haven't talked about Land and Sea. We just got Land, it at BGG Con. It's the first versus, time you've played it. Yeah, but, I mean, but we talked about you playing it yeah. at Gen Con. Yes. And so we have talked about it where well, somebody's land, somebody is sea, you're playing uh, hexagonal tiles trying to complete a land mass or a, a, an ocean or a pond or lake or whatever. A sea mass. Yeah, a sea mass. Uh, that kind of stuff. Really good game. We really like it a lot. Uh, but yeah, Ghost of Christmas, Tyler spotted. He brought it to Cabin Con in the spring. And when we were at the BGG Bazaar, I saw nothing of my list. Nothing of Brian's list, sadly. Uh, however, Tyler out of nowhere was like, here you go. And he found it and he just looked, handed it to me. And it was 10 bucks. And I was like, Haley, offer him five and take anything. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, she got it for seven. I am the bargainer. She's the bargainer because people will make deals with her where they won't with me, basically. Yeah, I basically, uh, long story short, we had mold in our hotel room. And I got us yes. free parking, a $50 credit and a free night. You did. And hopefully we'll hear back about that mold being mold and get the whole thing comped. That'd be great. And then I also got us a lot of deals at the bazaar. By a <laughs> lot of deals, she means a $10 game for seven, a $10 game for five, a $5 game for three, and a $40 set of action figures for 10. Yeah, boy. Which I don't know if he meant to do that, but he just wanted rid of them when you could tell. I just made really good eye contact. That's true. So we Assert played that. my dominance. We played Dual Clash Poker, which is a team-based poker game where... Having the highest card wins the hand, and if you win two out of the four or five hands, you win the round, and it's really tough because a certain card, like, what was it, the ace? There was a card that, like, cancels out the highest card of the opponent or something. I don't know. Very confusing. It's another oink game. We weren't sure how much we liked that one. Like, none of us really were like, this is amazing. We were like, this is kind of weird. This is another one of those games I have no recollection of playing. It's also one of those games you can play with a deck of cards just as easy as buying the game. I want to support support Oink, so if I decided to get it, I would. But if you wanted to try it again, that's how we would do it. Uh, We played Furry Foodies with Tyler, where your cat's pushing plates of food off of the board, basically. And I'm very proud because that is one that I learned and taught. And I won. You did. (laughs) So that was cool. Uh, that was the day that, um, I'm trying to think, uh, Isaac came by and Danny. So we got to meet Danny of Hachette Games, Yes, which is the French word for hatchet. So if you hear me say hatchet games, it's because it's easier to me to pronounce and I I will forget to say Hachette because French is confusing. Yes. But yes. So we got to meet Danny and uh, see Isaac. Uh, me and Danny and Tyler played a food trivia co-op game that is so far unpublished. That's pretty fun. Uh, basically they didn't say, she didn't say anything and we couldn't talk about it. Essentially it's a trivia game based around food. And they also had one based around travel. I guess I won't say more than that. Uh, pretty fun little co-op game. We, uh, me, you, Tyler played hidden leaders, which we talked about from Gen Con. I enjoy hidden leaders. I feel like nobody else likes it the way that I like it, but I find it to be a fun, uh, uh, hidden role game where it's not based on your communication. It's based on your play, which is, I always enjoy mechanical deduction rather than, uh, verbal. Then we got to play Tyler's hidden movement game. Yes. I I think that's one of my favorite parts about meeting up at these cons is I love playing Tyler's prototypes. I think we've played 
three of his prototypes. I mean, different iterations of each. Like we've played yeah. one of his pro- or a couple we, of his prototypes multiple we've times. We've played the jellyfish game multiple times. I've played and it through the, tabletop sim. Uh, also the the Caesar game multiple times. We played the Caesar game multiple times. We played the little skeleton game. Yes, we played a couple times, and then this time we played the Skinwalker Ranch hidden movement game. So he has a challenge for himself to design one game per month, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. But he did a great job on his prototypes. I always enjoy playing them, and I'm really glad that we're able to. He he lets us play them. He gives us that insight. Oh, for sure. Uh, After that, let's see. We played one called Hot Lead. I don't remember Hot Lead. I don't either. (laughs) It's so so bad. This is the one with the elephant. I don't think I played that one. It's another trick-taking type of game. I really don't think uh, I played that one. No, you did. You were in the game. You was I? You won the game. <laughs> I won the game? Tyler got no points. <laughs> he was zero. Uh, I literally don't remember this game at all. I don't remember what that game is I either. I won. We played a lot of games. We <laughs> play, uh, Me and Haley and Tyler played Flamecraft that we talked about earlier. Uh, let me see. Alan, Danny, Dave, Delton, Haley. That's me. Isaac and Tyler. All of us, this one we were at Isaac's house, got to play Fun Facts. Fun facts is essentially wits and wagers, except instead of people wagering a number, it's actually answering the question for yourself. So if you've played wits and wagers, it's like, how many miles is the circumference of the earth? You're like, shit, okay, I think it's this. I did not play that one, but you did. No, you played this one. I don't play that one. You were on our team. This is the one with the little the little angle thingies, because one of the questions was if you got a free paid trip to Disney in California once a year. How, oh, yeah, or, I or that whatever, now. how often would you go? And we both hit zero. That's right. That's, yeah, you're okay. right. So essentially, uh, Wits versus Wagers is like if the Earth, how many miles around is the Earth's circumference? And everybody puts their guess, and you can change where you put your thing based on if you think somebody else is right or not, or how well you know them. This game is kind of the same, except it's one of the questions was like, you get, if you go to Disney in Florida, you could go at any time for free to Disney in Florida, completely paid, flights, hotel, the trip. All of it. The question was, how many times a year would you go? So uh, starting with one player, the star of that round, they put their answer. Everybody else gets to put theirs where they think it goes in accordance to each other. And then the star can move theirs at the end. So me and Haley put zero. I knew we would both put zero. Uh, So I'm like putting it at the bottom. But it's the same thing as Witch and the Wagers, except it's personal answers. So it's how well you know your friends. And it's actually a really fun game. I just want to interject here real quick. Yeah. So playing these at Isaac Vega's house, this is just your annual reminder yeah. that Isaac Vega is one of the nicest, kindest, sweetest people on this entire planet. Every BGG we get to see Isaac, um, and every time we do, he's just the sweetest human being. And so nice and so helpful. He, he bought three packs of different flavored Oreos to make sure he had Oreos for the vegans. <laughs> yes, he did. He's so kind. and Always. Like, and it was... Like, I always bring this story up, but the first time we met him was at BGG Con in 2017, whenever- Gen we, Con. Or Gen Con, I'm sorry. Whenever we weren't anything. We weren't, we didn't have a podcast. We, no, we, we were just fans. We were just fans. And we go up to him and we just say, hey, you know, we're nervous as can be because we're as Isaac Vega. And we're like, we're a really big fan. And it's not just like he said, oh, thank you. Like, he engaged us in a conversation of like, what are you liking about the con? What's your experience been? What do you guys like to play? He has always been the nicest, kind of sweetest mm-hmm. human being. And so we're always so grateful to be able to go play games at his house. But just my interjection, yes. just your annual reminder, that Isaac Vega is a primo human being. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. After that, we played Alan's game, Cause of Death Ghost. Uh, essentially, it's a deduction game that I'm terrible at. I, I don't know how to play those kind of, like, it's one of those games that I don't know how to play. Alan nails it every time. I have no clue how to play that style of deduction game. Um, essentially, everybody has a role. But the first player then gets to look at two rolls and decide uh, to pat which one to pass, and everybody gets to pass whatever's handed to them or keep it. And so you have two cards, you'll pass one, then the next player will have two cards, and then they'll pass one. And you can try to like call people out based on what they've passed. If you're like, oh, I handed you the green, the green ghost, They're like no, no, you didn't. You handed me the you know red person. When in reality, you did hand them the green ghost, but they're trying to throw you under the bus. But if everybody passed it, it's hard to lie. I don't know. That kind of game's very confusing for me and difficult, which again is why I like deduction that's not based off of uh, verbal things. I like mechanical, which is why I like hidden leaders. I want to interject something too. So this was Saturday night. We were playing at Isaac's house. Sunday morning, Alan woke up sick. This should have been our first indication that Alan was sick is that he was not shirtless on the stationary bike the entire night. 
He was he kept stayed in his shirt while he was riding the the, the bike. I last, think that's because there were more guests. Maybe so. Because last year, like the entire time, he was shirtless on the stationary bike as we're playing games. He's just like getting his energy out, like a little hamster For in a sure. wheel, just. Ah! And then this year, he was sitting quietly with his shirt on, playing the game. So that should have been our first clue that Alan had the COVIDs. Yeah. Womp womp. Uh, let me see. Next thing we played, you weren't here for this. You went and learned Play-Doh 3000 and played with Isaac a whole bunch. Uh, us Won the, my first game against him. There you go. Us, uh, we played Tribes of the Wind, which is a new release game. Um, I think that the main game loop is fine. I think the game's okay. But I think that the this is the game where you have a hand of, of six, six cards? Five cards? Six cards? Five or six cards. And there is light, fire, leaves, I don't know, and water as your card types. Each of those card types have different actions. Those actions are determined, if you can do them, by the types of cards you have and the types of cards either the neighbor to your left, neighbor to your right, or both of them, or all three of you have. That's the coolest thing about it, is looking at your hand and going, okay, my neighbor here's got this many cards, so I can utilize this ability now. So that's really cool, but the rest of the game, I felt like wasn't anything that I was like super, super excited about. Um, I thought it was okay, and the only bad part about, I think it would be best as a two- or three-player game, because as a four-player game, I took my turn, Tyler takes his turn, and then Danny took her turn, and then Dave took his turn, and when Dave's turn's finally done and he draws up, now I can see which cards I can use. So that was the only bad part for it, is you really couldn't pre-plan your turns very well, um, but that the, the fact that you had to care about what cards you and, and your neighbors had was pretty cool. So that was kind of neat. Let me see here. We played Ole Guacamole, which I will highly recommend as a party game. Ole Guacamole is very simple. You flip a card and it has a B on it, as in the letter B. Uh, Haley, what's a word that uh, uh, doesn't use the letter B? Cat. Okay. I then flip a card. There's a B card out, and now I have flipped an E. I have to say a word that is related to cat without using the B and the E. So I say... I was going to say claw. Claw. But claw. The next player now flips another card. There's three letters out. That's the game. Super simple. But what makes the game super fun was A, it was easy as shit to learn and play. And B, uh, according to the official rules, you have 12 seconds to answer, which adds a timer, which is kind of fun and stressful. Uh, but you're supposed to write down the words that you use as clues. And every game, the, in that game, and every other game of it you've played that day, you're not supposed to use the same words. So if you play three games in a row, you've got a big ass list of words that you can't use. And it makes you when somebody then says, uh, you know, you said cat, then somebody says feline. Well, now you're thinking, OK, well, let me see. There's claw. There's mouse. There's, you know, fang. There's uh, litter. Oh, shit. And you're starting to have to think harder about what you're choosing. And it makes it really, really fun. Like, I highly recommend that uh, as just a simple party game that you can pick up at Target. We played Dragon's Head, which we talked about, Alan's trick-taking game. Yes. Uh, we played Left Right Dilemma, that is a neat party game. It's another Hachette game. Is Hachette publishing it? I think so. Oh, I didn't think they were. Oh. I talked to uh, Danny. So, uh, Danny? Yeah, yeah da Danny. Danny is a wonderful human being. She was very sweet, and we were all talking about languages because she's fluent in French. And, you know, for me, uh, I study German, and, you know, we talked about, you know, I have so much difficulty pronoun pronouncing French words because German, you pronounce every single letter. It's so easy. And then French, you like cut the word in half. And yeah. she pronounces Hachette so beautifully, so beautifully. One day I'll get to her level. That day is not today. It's, it's just really difficult. I, I, don't get, uh, I don't get French. I never have. It's very confusing to me. Uh, it looks like the publishers is Cojones and Gym Club KFT. So Hachette may be bringing it further into the U.S. I can pronounce cojones. Yeah, I can pronounce cojones. <laughs> yeah, but you can pronounce Spanish really well. See. Anyway, uh, so left-right dilemma is very simple. You make a pyramid. Three cards at the bottom, two cards above that, one card above that. Each one of those has a little uh, prompt and two answers. One person will look at the little pyramid that's built, and if each card has two answers, that means that bottom row of three cards has six different places you could be. They're little houses, and you pick which house you're at. Everybody else at the table has to pick what they think you are, and then they discuss and change and decide on a final answer of, is this where you are? So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of cooperative in the same sense as just one, where everyone's working together to get to the same place, 
but it's got, I mean, the reason it's left, right dilemma is there's left and right. It's a little skier. So it's kind of funny. Like you're slaloming down through the mountain, Uh really simple game. Uh, I think it's a really good, Alan loved it because it was such an icebreaker of having conversations that you would never expect. Like, which is sexier, a doorknob or a vacuum? And it's like, oh, okay, this is a more adult party game. Yes. But, <clears throat> I, mean, I guess it didn't have to be, but it's very fun. Sorry, I got to clear my throat. Talking a lot. We played Tricks and the Phantom from Oink Games. Uh, a really good game where it's like, oh, you have the number seven, which is the ambassador. Uh, but Haley had the number two, which cancels out the ambassador. But you thought this person was the th- thing. It's it's very much a game where everybody plays a card, and then it's everybody like organized crime. The game. Yes, everybody plays a card, and then everybody in reverse order will then essentially vote on who they think has the highest value card, which is called, considered the criminal. And then everybody reveals their cards, and all the different things happen. Like the one of the cards cancels out another couple of those do one of them is like if every other card is above a five then this card becomes the criminal kind of thing very very cool game i think alan already bought it had to burp the next game we played was scout another oink game very popular uh interesting game you have a hand of cards i think this is the last game we played that is the last game we played was uh was scout we got to play scout on sunday and it's uh you have a hand of cards you either have it you can't reorganize them you have them up or you can flip the whole hand upside down and have it up the other way because the cards are uh, split that way where they're different numbers. And essentially, you have to play either pairs or straights. Straights always beat a pair. So if you had uh, if you had three fives and someone played a four, five, six, that's going to beat the three fives. And you're trying to play the highest hand you can. If you can't play a hand higher than the person that played before you, you can scout by taking the outside of their hand. So if Haley played three fives, and I can't beat it, she could take one of the outside fives. Now, the key is she could take one of those outside fives and flip it to the other number and put it anywhere in her hand to help her create, uh, hopefully, either a, a, a pair or three of a kind or four of a kind or a bigger straight. Uh, there's a special use token that allows you to, I think, scout before you play. And if somebody plays a hand and nobody else around the table can beat it they are going to i think win the game at that point so it's really interesting it's really simple it's very fun it's one that i would like to have but yeah so that's all the 29 games that we played at bgg con i did not expect that to take so long to go through but i also feel like it's worth talking about all the games and how if we liked them and the experiences too and this should be bgg con i feel like it was it was a lot of fun yes uh, i think this was my favorite one yet just because, you know, we, we had so much fun playing games. You know, we met so many mm-hmm. new people. You know, we were able, it was like that, I feel like the first BGG Con, you know, we were out of our hotel room a lot uh, because that was 2019 yeah. before the plague. Um, and so we didn't really get a lot of quality time just with Alan and Tyler. Then the second BGG Con, we were very much quarantined to our room. And this BGG Con, mm-hmm. we still wore our masks. You know, we're, we're, Delt and I were vaccinated, boosted, all that fun stuff. And so, but, so we were still reserved, but we still met new people. So I yes. feel like this was the perfect... Uh, perfect blend. combo. Perfect combo. Because yeah. most of of, most of it was just playing with Alan and Tyler. Ninety nine percent of the time in the hotel room. There was a few times where we'd find a table in the back of the hall where it's not having a lot of traffic and there's not a lot of people around and play because uh, they have several halls you can play in. But most of it was in the hotel room. We played at Isaac's house and we went to one vegan dinner because we always have our one vegan dinner of the con. Yes. Which sadly Ace couldn't come because he had COVID going into the con. We're so sorry, and Ace. We missed you. It really sucks because Ace is awesome. We love hanging out with Ace. Ace he's, is Ace. He's super, super nice and always fun to talk to. And he usually organizes the vegan dinner. So it sucks that he didn't get to organize it this year. But hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get to see him next year when the time comes because he lives down there. But yes, BGG Con was a smashing success and we had a lot of fun. And if you ever get the chance to go, we highly recommend it. We know that cons can be expensive and traveling to Dallas might not be ideal, but it is one of, like, ticket-wise, one of the less expensive cons. Well, the passes are actually more than most other cons. Oh, are they really? A pass for BGG Con is $150. There's no cheaper ones. There are the, like, $400 premium ones that get you a shirt, first access to hotel, first access to passes the next year. It's a lot. Gen Con's passes are, like, 80 bucks. Really? Yeah, so... BGG Con's expensive, but the reason it's expensive is they have a massive team of employees and volunteers. They rent the hotel and get a special hotel rate. 
They have to lug all those board games from storage, do all the different stuff. So like it's expensive, but it's actually to me way more worth it because when you're spending $150 just to go to BGG Con, you're already saving money because the vendor hall is smaller and your opportunities to purchase is so limited that if you actually like came out of a day at Gen Con and came out of or came out of the whole con of Gen Con and came out of the whole con at BGG, even with BGG uh, having a more expensive badge, you will have spent less money because it's an, even though there's a vendor hall, even though there's the awesome BGG bazaar that we do every year, I have never spent close to what I spend at Gen Con, including passes. Right. So it com- it comes out in the wash basically. But I, I definitely think is the most fun con. Absolutely. And has the a huge board game library that's worth it. And so I'm I'm very grateful that we we're able to go this year, see our friends, enjoy ourselves, and yeah, I can't wait for next year. And now, join us for a Malt House Games podcast special, Bite Size Question. So the question for the episode, uh, these beers are very much hitting me, by the way, uh, because they're so freaking stout. Good night, Dalton. I'm about to go to sleep. The question for this episode is, what was our favorite BGG experience? I have one immediately in mind, but Haley, you go first. My favorite was walking with Alan the 3.2 miles to vegan dinner. Uh, every year, Alan wants to walk to vegan dinner, walk to Spiral, and we used to have vegan dinner at Spiral. And Spiral closed, sadly, Spiral closed. in Dallas. RIP in peace. Yeah. But we walked to our vegan dinner together. It was just him and I. It was drizzly. It was rainy. It was cold. But we had some very warm conversations and those conversations I feel like every time so every year I walk with him and half the time it's just me and him but I feel like every time we have those good conversations we grow closer in our friendship and I learn more about him I learn to appreciate him more as the human being that he is and so I'm very grateful for those walks and the conversations that we had that was really fun plus the dinner was bomb the dinner was really good that was was it the vegan food house I think vegan food house yeah it's like three miles from downtown Dallas so it's an easy three mile walk or we drove it in about 10 minutes. Uh, me, It was me and Tyler and Danny. And it, absolutely worth it. Uh, just really, really good. Their, their like fried catfish or whatever was oyster mushrooms that were battered. And they were so good. It was, it was a very good, very good meal. I think. That was a nice burp. Again, I don't think they heard that. You should put it in the microphone, man. No, because the video listeners will know that I just turned to burp. And the audio won't. I don't think that's enticing at all. So you need to <laughs> pay all. for our Patreon in yes. order to get the premium access to the burp. Uh, every level will get access to, to, to video podcasts. Even a dollar. Absolutely. I wish they would let me do 50 cents and I would totally put it on as an option, but I don't think they let you do less than a dollar. Anyway, my favorite moment of the whole con is of me being an absolute idiot. <laughs> there is a game from Big Potato Games. It is called Chicken vs. Hot Dog. <laughs> Chicken versus hot dog. L- legit, look this up. This game is no joke. <laughs> this game is where you have... I'm I g- pulling up pictures for the, for the viewers. I, I, it's a chicken that looks like one of those toys that you find in a person's nightstand that they don't want you to find. Yeah, there's a chicken and a hot dog like that. Uh, they're these hollow with suction cup bases. And the whole game, you can find videos of it online. We saw people playing it at the con. And I was like, we have to play this game. It looks so dumb in the best way. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is me. That in is me. In all your glory. That's the man I fell in love with right I, there. I love that stance. Uh, I, I will show this in a second. Uh, that, so the game basically is, is you have a card that's like, you have to toss it. Water, You know the water bottle toss where it's like you toss a water bottle and try to make it flip and land on its base? Yes. Okay. It's the same thing, but with the chicken or the hot dog. And you have to flip it and try to get it to st- stick. And you get so many tries or it's who can do it the quickest. Sometimes you have to flip it twice in the air at minimum. All, one's behind the back without looking. All that kind of random stuff, right? Uh, I want this game so badly because when that thing hits and when it sticks, it is so satisfying to have nailed it. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna hold the phone up instead of doing what I should, which is actually pull the picture up in the recording later and when I edit. But I'm gonna scoot up here. Well, I decided. Being There's the, three pictures, by the way. There are three pictures. You get three angles. I don't think we need more than the first angle. Uh, I think you need a second angle. Second angle is best. Maybe. Uh, I decided that being that there's a suction cup on these, especially the hot dog, that I needed to wear this on my forehead. You see it there. You know what it is. You know what that. You know what it looks like. 
Yeah. Subscribe uh, to our Patreon to see Delton with the basically the, a this is adult a, toy on his head. It looks like an adult toy on my head is a hot dog, right? This is just this is gold. <laughs> this is comedy gold here. Here's the thing. That's not even the best part. I was running around. Alan put the chicken on his head. We had a little sword fight with our forehead unicorn horns. It was all good, all fun and dandy. Well, the problem was I decided, all right, I'm going to take this off in a really funny way. So I, uh, that's, I'm not going to worry about that. That's too hard to see. I decided to just grab it and just kind of yoink it forward in hopes to just yank it off my forehead. So I had a massive ass hickey mark <laughs> on my forehead from this stupid thing for like a week and a half. If just you in looked time at to me, quarantine. Just in time to quarantine. If you looked at me, there's just this deep red spot on my forehead. And I was like, all right. And we were like, oh, it'll go away in the morning. It wasn't gone in the morning. It wasn't gone the day after that. It sure as hell wasn't gone the next three or four days. So we want to thank Alan for exposing us to COVID so that way Delton could work from home for a week and a half to <laughs> yeah. not expose his hickey head. And thank you to Big Potato Games for making the most ridiculous looking game and me, of course, having to stick something to my forehead. <laughs> so that's where we are in life. That's my favorite experience of BGG Con because it's easily going to be my most memorable of yanking that and going, oh, oh. and then peeling it and then realizing I gave <laughs> myself a forehead hickey for a while. It's the man I, I fell in love with I, right there. I'm an idiot, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but that was our BGG experience. That was the con. We talked about Flamecraft. That's essentially our whole episode, which is running a little longer than I expected, actually. That's but either okay. way, I, we'll wanted, take it. I wanted to, to talk about the BGG games we played and just some of our experiences and a few of the things we got to do. So I'm glad we got to do that today along with some delicious beers that are far too stout for oh. how late it is with how little food I have. You finished yours. I still have like a solid five and a half ounces left of mine, man. I'll drink it if you don't. No, it's mine. <laughs> I'm going to eat some pasta, though. The more I drink, the better it is. And I don't know if that's a compliment <laughs> to the beer or to how much alcohol percentage is in it. It sounds like a country song. I forgot what I said. The more I drink, the better it is. There you go. That is a country song. Jesus. Shout out to Willie. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Malthouse Games podcast. Uh, I already shouted out the Patreon patrons, but if you want to be a Patreon patron and see this podcast done in video with very minor edits, I'm not going to go in and clip all the shit that I say. I'm not going to go through and be like, oh, I need to cut this gap of silence shorter. Oh, I need to remove this of me going, uh, none of that stuff. You're going to get almost all of it as it was recorded with all the weird burps and strange things like that. Uh, so you can go do that at patreon.com slash Malthouse Games. Make sure to follow us on all social media at Malthouse Games, M-A-L-T-H-A-U-S Games. You can follow me at Delton Brack, D-E-L-T-O-N-B-R-A-C-K. You can find Haley at S-Q-U-I-R-R-E-L-Y-G-E-K. That is at Squirrely Geek. If you have a question for us to answer on the episode, a subject or topic that you think we should cover, a beer you would like us to go find and drink and review on the show, or a game you want us to take a look at, be sure to send an email, contact at malthousegames.com. We already have an amazing question. I guess we didn't mention we played games with Nick and Jennifer online. We did. We that got was so much fun to see them again. It was. We got to play Lost Ruins of Arnak with the expedition leaders. And I finally won my first game against Nick. Did you win? I did. I got 69 points, remember? It was nice. Nice. It was. That's right. You had 69. That's so funny. Uh, yes, you won, but it was Lost Ruins of Arnak with the expansion. Very much like it. Would like to pick up the expansion, but we got to see them. And Jennifer gave us a great uh, question, or really more of a topic, I think, for an episode coming up. So keep your eye on the next couple episodes, and we will be incorporating that. And I will, of course, shout that out. Keep your eye if you are a Patreon backer. Keep your ear if you're not. There you go. Perfect. But yeah, so I think that's everything for today. Uh, we're going to go make some dinner, I think. Pasta. I might have some... Uh, cereal before we get to dinner so I can put something in my stomach. Pasta! But yes, yeah, so until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I forgot how to do this. Sit back, <laughs> relax, grab a drink, and play some games. Did we'll you see really you folks later. I really had to look <laughs> at it. My, my, my brain just like went away from it. Oh okay, yeah, we did not have anything to drink before this episode. This is just these Here's the thing. Beer. Here's the thing. Shh, shh, shh. It's a mixture <laughs> of I'm tired, very high, very high alcohol percentage beer on an empty stomach. Mostly empty stomach. And we've been doing this now for an hour and 11 minutes, almost an hour and 12. So I've hit the point of like, my brain's just gone. I'm tired, <laughs> ready to like eat some food and get out of the computer room. I just love that you read the glass for our 100th episode that says, sit back, relax, grab a drink, and play some games. We'll see you folks next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>